although I don't think it's probably going to be a metagun, it is a little bit better than what I originally thought, and we kind of made it sort of viable. It has a different type of playstyle, though, which is very difficult to kind of work around. And the game we're talking about right now is the uh, Scar. So this gun right here, it doesn't really have that crazy of a recoil pattern. It seems very manageable, even for me on PC. Uh, it has very low ammo capacity, which is the, probably the biggest issue with this gun. Um, but what I've found with this weapon while trying to figure out something that it can do specifically that's somewhat better than other rifles, um, and I tried range setups, I tried sniper, like long range, but you might as well just use an LMG. I've tried short range stuff, but the recoil gets too crazy. Um, this right here is a very generic build, and I'm going to show it to you real quick. Um... As you can see, no muzzle, no barrel, tack laser, stipple grip tape, close quarter stock, VLK optic, and a bipod foregrip. And the reason this works is basically the fire rate on this gun is not super great, okay? The damage is lower than an AK, uh, so in my mind, it's, it's probably a better option to use an AK. Now, what does this offer? that an AK wouldn't. It seems to be a hybrid in between the 5.56 weapons and the high damage AK rounds. So you have a weird in-between. And the in-between rounds, they usually just deal a lot of damage, or um, like the AK rounds and things like that, they usually deal a lot of damage with a lower fire rate. This one's in-between, so it's kind of a mix of all. Now, the one thing that I can get with this rifle that I can't really get very easily with other rifles is because the recoil on this gun is a little bit more manageable than like the AK, which has a bunch of side-to-side, -side, so you don't need all the extra attachments to kind of keep this weapon under control. And on top of that, it comes with a... Uh, a mod that no other weapon can really get and that's the bipod foregrip and a lot of people say that this gun is terrible and you can't use it and there's there's no reason to like like you're never going to be crouched or prone but here's the thing okay the gun itself with the base mods the base barrel the base no tip on the gun or muzzle works very very good this bipod foregrip is the only thing in the game that I've seen that's like this, where you get standing 17% recoil reduction, uh, then you go prone and it increases to like 30 plus percent, and then you go uh, or you go crouching and get 30 plus percent, and then you go prone it gets up to 50 something percent, which a lot of barrels and things that you get on other guns will give you like 40 percent, right? Um, but you see with the scar. The barrel only gives you like up to 10% recoil reduction, which isn't really that much. And then the compensator can give you 27% or something, which is what I use on most other rifles. But the fire rate's lower on this, and the recoil pattern isn't super crazy on it anyway. So this bipod foregrip, I think, is probably one of the best attachments for a SCAR. Um, just because it gives you so much recoil control. Now, when you're close range, things like that... You don't need to go prone. You don't need to go crouched. Um, the deal with this gun, though, is that you have to be accurate and you have to be fast. And that's where I think the play style with the uh, the scar is is a lot different than a lot of the other ARs. So close range, just standing, you're going to have 17% recoil reduction, which is going to help you out a lot. It's going to allow you to uh, laser beam some targets close range. No big deal. And then longer the ranges get if you want to laser beam somebody you're going to have to go crouch or go prone now on top of this this gun only has um, a 20 round mag and you can increase that if you drop something like the stipple grip tape which i was using before um i was using this 30 round mag and i've tried the sleight of hand the thing is is that the 30 round mag does feel a lot better um just in terms of sure damage that you can deal um with targets uh, it helps you a bit like laser beaming someone down at range for sure. Um, but from what I've seen in testing this gun, the 30 rounds 
and sleight of hand, they don't really seem to make a huge difference when it comes to the overall fight. If anything, I think 30, the 30 rounds will probably be a bigger deal than the, um, the perk of sleight of hand. But, essentially what this gun, it forces you to play very tactically. If you want a gun that you're just going to be able to sprint out in between a bunch of players and spray them down, the scar is not the weapon for you, okay? It's this gun forces you to find cover. It forces you to move. Um, you're going to have to think when you use this weapon. It's the only way I've been able to really get it to operate effectively. And the way that it does this is because the time to kill with this gun is a lot higher than the other weapons. But it's consistent over all ranges. So the closer range you need to be, you need to be able to move fast with it. And you need to be able to take enemies out. So you have to hit your shots, namely headshots up close. And you're going to have to be able to move around cover. And that's where this weapon strong suit is. Is because you're going to have a faster ADS time, a faster sprint to fire time than most of the other ARs. And the reload speed is not that bad either. So you're going to want to pop out shoot your enemy go back into cover and just kind of bob and weave into cover as much as you can now the damage i don't think is high enough to really justify wound wounding perk but if you wanted to run wounding perks on this it probably wouldn't be too bad either because it's going to allow you to hurt your enemy when you go into cover and then come back out and finish them off once you reload um, so that's good. This gun is also one of the only weapons that I've been able to find that's actually a very, very, very fast with a Merc uh, Thermal on it. So if you want to run this with smokes, you can. It probably works better with smokes, to be honest, just because you're going to be able to um, take advantage of your accuracy. You're going to be able to take more time with your shots as well, and your damage isn't going to drop off over range, and it'll help you kind of minimize the amount of bullets you might take when you're close range as well. Um, if you're running anything else, let's say VLK or a uh, smaller optic, if, if that's what you prefer, and then stun grenades, things like that. Things that are going to give you an edge to uh, kind of beat your opponent's close range is the thing. The gun can handle itself decently long range. It's just the ammo capacity that gets it in trouble. Um, again, it probably isn't going to be a super meta gun, but the ability to maneuver and move quickly with this gun ADS really fast, this, this is the strong suit. Okay, so if you take this versus an M4 and you fight directly, if you hit both of your shots um, at the same time, M4 is probably going to win if you're hitting chest shots. If we are looking at the damage time to kill charts, um, it will definitely win with chest shots, and it will win with headshots, but it will be closer with the headshots than it will be with chest shots. Now, the way we are going to minimize this is because even though the time to kill is basically like two tenths of a second longer on the foul we can get that time back almost with uh ads speed is what we're trying to do we can get 160 or something faster milliseconds of ads speed versus an m4 like a normally modded m4 if they mod it for ads speed then they'll be able to beat us on that or match us but they won't be able to have as much accuracy and recoil control as the SCAR will. Um, so the ADS speed is what is going to sell this weapon for you. If you are bobbing and weaving in and out of cover and you have to ADS consistently a lot, then uh, this gun's going to help you out quite a bit. So it's, it's one of those guns where you're going to want to shoot your targets first, but you have to be able to land your shots. And then you're going to have to be able to um, use cover and position effectively. It's it's the only way. And then even if you fight another player, you're going to have a limited ammo capacity. Uh, even though this thing can beam at ranges even without any super crazy mods, it's, it's going to be rough. Well, 60 rounds compared to 20 is a big deal and even if you put the 30 on there it might help you out a little bit but it isn't going to be uh, like a, a game breaking thing 
if we look at this chart um, on here, it's saying that the scar takes eight rounds to the chest to kill and five to the head, which is a little bit lower than the M4, but considering the fire rate is only at 570 compared to the M4's uh, 800, the M4 can definitely put out more rounds. And so basically what you're going to have to do is bait people's shots. You're going to have to hit them, go into cover, they're going to waste a lot of ammunition trying to spray you down, and you're going to have to bide your time, and that's what's going to go down with this weapon. Now, I don't know if wounding rounds would help you with this uh, effect much, because you're going to have to basically smack them. You'd have to break their armor, get them low, and then you'd have to be able to push and, or reposition um, while they are injured. I haven't got to test the wounding rounds out so much, but if I did, I would probably drop the stipple grip tape. Um... Other than that, there's not really a whole lot you can do to improve the gun much. If you put on a bunch of recoil control, um, yes, you can shoot very well, like long distances and things, but your ADS speed is going to be really low. And since your time to kill is already so low, you're not going to be able to pull off um, very fast kills with this. And then you're going to want to try and hit headshots as much as possible, um, things like that. Now... I will say with this gun, it's probably one of the only guns that I can think of that you're going to want a secondary weapon with. Um, maybe even like at least a pistol. You're going to want something to be able to finish off enemies in case you don't have the option to reload. Um, speaking of which, this is probably a gun that I would run amped with. Because um, with this weapon, you don't, you don't have... The option, you're going to have to be able to think really fast on your feet when you use the SCAR. So, if you are in a direct firefight with somebody, you don't have time to reload your weapon. You probably won't have time to move, but you could probably swip, swap to your pistol and then try to jump shot your way out of it. Something like that. It's, it's not a whole lot that you can do. You could run an SMG or something with it to help you finish off people. It would also help you in the close quarter situations. Um, with the scar, but um, I mean, honestly, the scar would probably work very well with an SMG just because they would have similar um, ADS speeds and stuff. So the scar might not be able to win in a direct gunfight against like an M4 close range, but an MP5 might be able to, or you could finish them off with a scar if you ran out of ammo. So, uh, on top of that, though, there's not a whole lot you can do here. I mean, the uh, stun grenades and stuff work very well. I'll try to show you a little bit of gameplay um, just to kind of think about what you're doing, but all the game modes are a little funky right now. The main issue is that positioning with cover is very hard um, in some situations, and it might not even save you in others. Because if you if you take cover behind a vehicle or something like that, um, you're not going to be able to just pop up and shoot them if they're repositioning. You're not going to know where they are. And unless they are not ADS'd on where you are right now, you're probably not going to be able to get that shot. If you pop out and they're not ADS'd, you'll, probably, you'll be able to ADS faster. So you'll be able to probably trade shots with them for a second or two. But you most likely won't be able to finish them. Um... And this is where I think maybe smoke grenades could be good, because if you're taking cover and you get pinned, you could use smokes to possibly reposition, but if they have a thermal, you're kind of boned anyway. So it's it's a very it's very hard to judge um, how to use this gun, but I think that the mobility is a big deal. We're going to do it with the stuns. I might swap it out and try some... <laughs> Uh, with the smokes, but we'll do a plunder and we'll drop down and find somewhere that we can fight and I can show you a little bit of the accuracy and stuff with this weapon real fast um, it's it's a complicated weapon for sure, but I think it has potential um, to be good the thing is, is just that
Check your gear and weapons. We go soon. Dropping into the area. Watch the sky.
UAV overhead.
as you can see so far that the scar it, it has ammunition issues you can try to put the 30 run mag on there if you really want to but this gun is about movement more so than actual damage because its damage values are lower than the AK, so you can't really justify having a lower ammo capacity because the, the AK can do like 48 damage or something to a chest, which is like almost twice as much as a 5.56, which means that a 30 round mag on an AK is basically like a 60 round mag on a 5.56. But this gun right here doesn't have that damage and it still requires about eight shots which is basically the same as an m4 but it has less ammo capacity than an m4 so it's going to take uh, it's a whole lot to get that so you can't really just challenge people you have to be able to move so movement speed is this gun strong so you want to be able to move around in ads very quickly um as you can see the recoil on this gun is not not high at all like it handles perfectly fine at long distances. If I really need to, I can go prone and laser beam somebody at very, very, very far distances. The range is still good. The accuracy is good. The control is fine. Um, I can drop the stipple grip tape. As you see, we got a melee kill as well. So, I mean, maybe even the breacher device could be a thing. But here's one thing that we're getting here is that you can see right here, if you used any of these barrels, you would decrease your aim down sight speed and movement speed. And then here, this as well, you get stability and aim down sight speed. So we're getting two pluses. You just got to think of them as pluses to ADS speed there, right? You, if you run the ADS speed barrel, it's going to make your recoil, recoil too wild, right? So we get two ADS speed boosts there, one here, one here, one here. So we got six pretty much in total for the ADS. And now if we dropped the sight or something like that, we could put the 30 round mag on there. We could put uh, some sort of other thing, a breacher device. Um, and we're starting to think about perks because, okay, so let's think about this a little bit, right? Wounding, I feel like, is very, very good for people who have um, high damage rounds, things that will be able to break through armor very quickly and then deal some damage. So if you get the first shots on an enemy, even though you might not kill them right off the bat, if they happen to get into cover, they're going to be severely hurt and they're not going to be able to fight back for a while, which is going to allow you to have more time to reposition to win the next trade because they have to try and figure out where you were and where you are, right? Now, I think something like this might be um, a disabling, might be good for this gun, and I'm not positive on this, um, but if we look at damage charts because I have these pulled up somewhere we're gonna look, look at the base stat comparisons I'm not showing it on screen but um, I'm just going to the scar the base fire rate for this gun is 573 rounds per minute 56 to a head 35 to a chest 35 to a stomach 35 to extremities so from what I'm getting with this gun is that it doesn't have a damage drop off for limbs whereas if we look at like um the m4 um and things like that the damage is 18 for extremities 22 like it drops off to 22 and then it goes to 18 at very long ranges there's, there's no damage drop off on this gun at any range so i think that maybe disabling could be in a strong suit for this weapon just because um, you're going to be able to slow enemy movement speed, but I don't know mu enough about disabling to actually uh, think it through, because wounding could still be very good on this gun as well, considering it takes 8 shots to kill, it still does decent damage, um, it's going to take like 5 shots to break armor though, and then you're going to have to do uh, the other 3 to finish them off pretty much. I'm sure there's probably plenty of times that you could probably smack somebody and keeping them weak would most likely help you finish them off the next trade. But disabling is going to maybe give you more time to kill them. I don't it depends on how long the disabling effect lasts because if you shoot them in the legs and they are disabled from tactical sprinting and they they're slowed if it's for a few seconds 
you might be able to just um, use that time to distance yourself from your opponents if they're close range. So you shoot them, you hit them a few times, you hit them in the legs, and then you can reposition while they're slowed. And then come back into a fight. And since they're slowed, they're not going to be able to move into cover very fast. And you may already be able to go into cover. Or it might give you extra time to reload so you can finish them off the second go around. If they're still there. So we're going to have to do testing with crippling power. Um, sleight of hand didn't work super well. It was, it was okay. It's not super crazy. Um, and wounding might be necessary but you'd have it you'd basically have to smack them with the gun and then try to finish them off but give it a try and see what you think